Recently, there's been an influx of people immigrating to my native state of Florida. Much of this has been driven by the events of 2020, mainly the coronavirus pandemic, but also the shifting political and cultural reality across the country. In the vicinity of my neighborhood, there are currently four new housing developments being built and many similar developments within my city. As I drive around, I see plates from all over the country, mostly from the east, Ohio, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Texas, and sometimes even a California plate. Florida is no stranger to newcomers. The population has doubled since 1980 from 10 million to 20 million. When my great-great-grandparents moved here in 1932, the population wasn't even 2 million. About two-thirds of the people here today were born somewhere else, and a quarter weren't even born in the United States. Despite this history of growth, this recent influx is different. At the very least, it feels different, even aside from current events. Florida, I'd argue, is becoming a kind of microcosm of the country as a whole. It would be wise to pay attention to the forces at play and their consequences. Some of the biggest problems with this country can be observed in situ, at the human scale, occurring right in front of you. Florida could be a proving ground for how we deal with our collective spiritual afflictions, and so far the results aren't as promising as many might believe. For now, the state is a burgeoning warm prospect for the weary, vibrant green and soaked in golden light. Detractors of the sunshine state of mind will continue to write hit pieces about the governor and warn of the notorious Florida man, but Florida presently offers a higher quality of life for normal people, and they know it. I just don't know for how much longer. Furthermore, can the spiritual underpinnings responsible for current Florida's growth continue indefinitely? In many ways, it's 20th century Americanism on steroids, pushed forward by 20th century Americans, the boomers. How did that work out for America, exactly? And how is this working out for Florida? To those thinking of relocating here, come while the waters are warm, I just can't promise that they won't become unbearably hot someday soon. There is much interest in Florida at the moment, especially among conservatives, who view the state as a bastion of freedom in an age of lockdowns. Those rights we traditionally think are protected by the Constitution, like the freedom to assemble, suddenly don't seem so assured. The lack of a state income tax makes Florida a refuge for the tax-averse libertarian, the pro-law enforcement, pro-gun atmosphere makes it a castle for the law and order Republican. Florida is Trump's state, after all, or at least his official place of residence. Boats flying his flag zoom up and down the intercoastal waterway. Florida is an affordable subtropical paradise for anyone. Give me your retired, your bored, you're stuck in traffic, yearning to breathe, mask-free. But nothing says conservative quite like the situation of mass migration, unbridled growth, and constant change. There are two major movements that are converging on Florida. That is, white boomers coming from the north, and Hispanics and other groups coming from the south and beyond. The immigration from both directions is increasing. White boomers are approaching their twilight years. They're retiring in greater numbers. Additionally, immigration to the United States from around the world is at some of the highest levels in the country's history when looked at proportionally or by total numbers. To understand the situation in Florida, you must understand these two groups. As the dynamic between them plays out, so too will a similar dynamic play out across the country. One group is American-born, old, white, and largely conservative in some respects. The other is foreign-born, younger, non-white, and tend to vote for more liberal politicians and policies, regardless of their personal politics. In multi-ethnic democracies, people tend to vote along ethnic lines, no different than how people tend to vote for candidates they find more physically attractive or charismatic. 
A naturalized immigrant friend of mine was jubilant after the inauguration simply because he shared broadly Caribbean roots with Kamala Harris, and that alone was enough to make her a good representative on his behalf. I cannot overstate how blurry the dividing lines are between these two mass movements. Their members play a myriad of roles on a grand performance taking place on the stage of Florida. Some of these roles are so similar they might as well be the same. But the script of this production has already been written. The ending can be known if you simply read ahead. I personally can't find a role for myself in the sequel and I increasingly don't know what my role is in the current production. I'm getting fewer and fewer lines as the pages turn on. As many have said in some form or another, the old America is dying, and a new America is struggling to be born. In Florida, you see this happen in real time. Florida is a front in a kind of war, but you'd be mistaken if you thought this battleground was one of open conflict or even hidden conflict. The truly interesting characteristic of this front is how well the combatants get along. This is certainly not shaping up like any war that occurred in Florida throughout its history preceding major demographic change. The conquistadors brought Spaniards, the Seminole Wars brought crackers, the Civil War brought Yankees, this war will bring the whole world. Instead of craters and trenches, it will leave behind mega highways and skyscrapers. At least a crater could become a lake, and a trench eventually mistaken for a small stream. I'm perhaps more qualified than most to analyze the situation from multiple sides. Where do I fit in? I am a product of this dynamic, my father being a white American with both southern and northern roots, my mother being a non-white immigrant from the Caribbean. If I'm honest, I grieve every day for the old America. I'm apprehensive for the new America, if it can even be called that. And as a Floridian, I can't help but feel like a non-combatant watching two sides converge to the detriment of my home. So what sets the white northern invaders apart from the brown southern invaders? After much reflection, I think their similarities are more telling than their differences. They are both invaders, bluntly speaking. You might use softer language for either group if it fits your particular narrative, or harder language as I am for this narrative. Their differences are then just skin color and direction of migration meaning ethnicity, culture, language, customs, attitudes, religion. Obviously, I'm being simplistic in my labeling, but these differences have been discussed at length. And any article that you read that frames immigration in respect to our similarities, our common humanity, tend to have an agenda to socially engineer and manufacture consent through an appeal to emotion. People bring their countries with them, this is undeniable if you're being honest. But why do people move in the first place? Most people moving to Florida are moving primarily for economic reasons, material gain, and it shows. The Mexican construction worker, the retired New Yorker, the Cuban capitalist, the Midwestern college student. Everyone is trying to earn a buck or save a buck. People are willing to trade away the communities they were raised in, leave their families, and enter into a space of cultural undifferentiation. The end result is simply a place that has no culture, no shared history, no meaning. This common critique of America lies heavy on Florida. If the old white boomers lack culture, soon the young, diverse immigrants will find themselves in a similar situation. They are both carried by the tides of the same process. True capitalism doesn't discriminate. Doubly, given the multitude of places new immigrants come from, they will find it that much more difficult to establish enclaves and institutions to pass on their culture to the next generation. They will lose track of their roots faster than the Europeans ever did after arriving in America. What happens when folkways die? When people abandon their traditional ways of living and understanding, they become new customers for the culture industry. 
If your primary motivation is to move to Florida to line your wallet, your secondary motivation might as well be to empty it. In Florida, amusement parks constitute a physical manifestation of the culture industry. If a temple is the closest point on Earth to heaven, Disney World is the closest point to the fantasy worlds created by the culture industry. An entire economy exists in Florida to help people from around the world escape reality and enter into artificial realities created, owned, and controlled by corporations. If amusement parks now serve the almost religious purpose of helping people find some kind of manufactured meaning, the rest of the hospitality and service industry in Florida exists to extract as much time and money from people as possible through hedonistic experiences. You would be mistaken for thinking that this sector is only aimed at tourists. On the coasts and the interior, cities are master-planned and built in competition with one another to be the most efficient extractor of wealth from their inhabitants. I often wonder to myself, what do we make? What exactly do we produce in this state? I suppose we make experiences. We have an experiences-based economy. In my town, we have a factory that produces boats for leisure. Many of my friends work in restaurants. My sister worked at Disney World. I have an immigrant friend who welds together the steel structures of condos, and another who works as a maid. What is the meaning to our work? Much like America, we can't seem to find the meaning to any of this. Whether you're being served by the service sector or serving in the service sector, both seem just equally hollow. In truth, the old America has been gone, and so has the old Florida. No matter where we live, we all seem to live in remnants. Like an archaeologist, I search for artifacts, anything, to build a narrative and an identity that makes sense. You can spend an entire lifetime dusting off these items and sealing them behind glass. If our sins result from living in confusing times, we must be forgiven. Both the Christian nationalist and the woke progressive strive for much the same thing. A higher purpose, some great mission. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a time where things did seem to make sense, in the shadow of the greatest generation, around people who had lived in my town much of their lives. I certainly grew up in America, among Americans. It pains me to consider the very likely probability that Florida will not remain part of an America that I can recognize in the near future. The opinion among my friends, both American-born and immigrant alike, is that South Florida is not America. Spending many summers in the Caribbean as a child, I would have to agree. Miami resembles Sao Paulo in some parts and Port-au-Prince in others. It's not uncommon to walk into gas stations and find nobody speaking English. Such a transformation would have been unthinkable to my grandparents when my father was born in Fort Lauderdale in 1960. Projecting current demographic trends in our state out into the near future, it's clear that eventually the whole state will not be what we consider today as America. The baby boomers won't live forever. You can think this change is something good, and you're entitled to your preferences, as am I, but like most people, I desire to live and raise a family in my own culture and country. I'm being gradually sent to a different country just by standing still, this is truly no country for old men. This reality seems to be lost on many conservatives. The fact that people tend to vote along ethnic lines means demographics will eventually catch up to the Republican Party, who can't even seem to conserve anything while in charge. In many ways, Florida currently resembles California during the Reagan years. A red state until immigration permanently changed demographics and the outcomes of subsequent elections. In California, the middle class has now largely evaporated. Within a few decades, I can see similar trends affecting Florida. Simply put, Hispanics come to Florida to live, and boomers come to Florida to die. 
The best ideals of America are today absent from most of its people, and these ideals are specifically absent from Florida. Our state is a kind of dependent island. It isn't self-reliant on any level. Energy, food, and yes, its own population is imported from elsewhere. Urban sprawl presents another barrier to people forming a true sense of community. Diversion and distraction keep much of us too occupied anyways. Our wilderness and natural land is being gradually destroyed. Lush forests are quickly bulldozed to make way for gated subdivisions, featuring near-identical houses and the petty tyranny of homeowner associations. Soon, Americans themselves will be a fraction of the population. Our state anthem wasn't even written by an American. The words so stale and lifeless, you'd think it was composed by a marketing agency. Apart from the demographics, the weight of international wealth will continue to reign supreme, especially in the large cities. My state belongs to the highest bidder, equal opportunity, regardless of race, religion, creed, or national origin. I recently visited the city of Delray Beach, trying to find the graves of my great-great-grandparents. The cemetery is perhaps the only plot of land that's been left alone. It's located off the six lanes of Interstate 95. The cemetery is bordered on one side by a poor black neighborhood, and on the other side by a high-rise apartment complex, with balconies overlooking the headstones. Across the street from the modest neighborhood that my great-great-grandparents lived are high-end apartments and townhouses, luxury sedans parked parallel in the streets. My great-grandfather lived downtown where most of the buildings are now posh restaurants. He was a farmer, as were many Americans in the early 20th century. Today, the wages of farm labor have been greatly depressed by immigration, so it's no longer a viable line of work for most Americans. I currently could not afford to live in Delray Beach, even in the old neighborhood of my great-great-grandparents. What used to be a town of working people trying to build a community is now a town of leisure for part-time residents served by full-time residents. No one really owns Delray Beach in a holistic sense. No one can claim the city in the same way its residents could a century ago. People either have no stake or a fractional share. People aren't all in. The strongest force acting upon the city comes from people who don't live there, may never live there, and might not even know anything about Delray Beach. How much control does anyone have over this city's fate? I can see a similar future for my own coastal Florida town, my child or grandchild visiting our family graves at our cemetery might have the same experience, to feel like a returning stranger, the past being decidedly in the ground. You can't lie in anguish over loss. Communities, ways of living, even nations, die just as our ancestors did, and as we eventually will ourselves. What we can do is try building something that will be worth remembering, worth grieving over once it's gone. Our ancestors fulfilled their purpose, and so must we. Unfortunately, I don't see Florida as a good means to the next iteration of this great chain, at least not for myself. If you are concerned with preserving, passing down, and building upon the best parts of your culture, your inheritance, you need to live in a place that enables this. Every choice you make shapes the destiny of your children and onwards further than you can imagine. With God's grace, make good decisions. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland.